much. Happy to see still so many of you. So this is like a late in the day and very hot. Um, I don't have like the aids, like the like the um, uh, like a like a like a kid or like a very uh, catchy presentation. So I will try to make it energetic for you. Um, and uh, I indeed I'm with the Gollum Foundation. Uh, then, like a wildland and octant are a project of like, the Golden Foundation. So, like a Golden Foundation is the way that the founder, and uh, Golden Foundation is a spin-off of like the Golden Network. Those of you who are like long enough in this space might, might, might remember the project that we launched in 2016. That was one of the first token sales on on Ethereum blockchain, and it happened when we still consider that as rather a way of like the funding project than doing like the bad stuff. Anyway, um, as the result of those actions, like we, we, we at the Golem Foundation found ourselves at some point with the substantial amount of ETH and the mission that is like a building like a use cases for GLM, for the Golem Network token. And Octant is exactly this while trying to do like exciting stuff and, and, and fund public goods. So, uh, you know, this is like the, almost the end of the conference, so you know that already, and I assume like most of them knew that before coming here, that for like a funding stuff, for funding public goods, we need like a, specifically like the two things. Right? We, will, we need a lot of things, but we, for sure we need funds, and we need allocation mechanism. And, and Octane is all about those two things. So, like, of course, like, uh, as, for the, as for the funds, like we... We, we have this like a 100,000 ETH back since the crowdfunding. And this is like a substantial funding that we want to use in a regenerative way. So we, so we stake all those ETH and we use for all that happens in Octant only staking revenues. And while we have like a solo stake, those, those ETH, we are asking like a GLM token holders to lock their GLM in a very sim simple contract, like a contract that does nothing but locks the GLM and allows us to keep track of the, like, the locked GLM, not being moved at the given period of time. And if they do that, we attribute them like the share of the rewards, of the, of the each staking rewards. And we, we do that proportionally, so if you, lock 1% of GLM, you get like 1% of staking reward. And if you do not lock, then you don't have any rewards. If you do not take any action, and I will tell more about that in a second, you also have no rewards. But the trick is that obviously, like uh, I doubt that 100% of GLM supply will be locked, like for the number of reasons. Like, uh, even if you take the ETH as the reference, I don't remember what's the, like, a total supply locked in staking at the moment, like a 25%, 30%, something like that. So, so we don't expect, like, a 100% of GLM to be locked in Octant, which means that if this, like, individual reward attribution is linear, we have, like, the huge surplus. And, and we, like, uh, have, like, a very simple formula, like, what happens with that funding so basically, like we pass like a square root of the percentage of the GLM locked. Like a, we calculate percentage of that, and that's the percentage that goes to the to, to Octant from all the staking reward, and the rest goes to the back to the to the staking pool, like minus costs. So so this is not like that we are taking the rest for ourselves, but the rest like makes this setup even more regenerative. But then that means that we have like a pretty big difference between this, like the, the total funding that goes to Octant and what we attribute to the users locking the GLM. And the difference is like the match reward. So basically like what creates our matching fund. So just to give you an example, if you have like a theoretically like 25% of the supply locked, that means like the square root of 25% is 50%, and that means that like a 50% of all the staking revenue goes to Octant. The rest is restake to increase the, the rewards of the next epochs. 
And out of this, of this 50%, like a 25% points are the revenues on the individual levels, and 25 are um, um, is, is the match reward pool. And for the reference, we have like a 14% of the all GLM supply locked at the moment. And like if you are locking GLM, you can claim all that reward for yourself. Like the, so, this is like the kind of like a staking operation for you. Like, but, but, but you can also decide during the period that we call allocation window, you can decide that you actually donate some of it or all of it to the public goods projects. And how much you allocate is decisive on how the matching pool is distributed. So basically, you get like a massive leverage out of all those like a voluntary taxation that you make. And I know that this is a little bit late, so I will run through that, you, through, through that once again, but with the nice graphs. So we, as the Golden Foundation, we stake ETH, and that generates through proof of stake some accumulated staking rewards. And then we look at like, uh, how many people like, uh, lock that in Octant. We pass some to Octant. Some goes back to Golden Foundation and to restaking. And the total rewards are split into matched rewards that go to the projects and user rewards, so individual rewards that people can claim. And then people can just claim their rewards, take that to, the, to their wallets, end of the story. But they can also donate to the projects, and that it gets like a matched funding and goes to donation recipients. And there are also some like, other things that I ha don't have time to uh, describe to you at the moment, but makes the design even more robust. So uh, where we are at the moment? We, are, um, we, we, we concluded in July Epoch Zero. So that was like a mostly marketing event but also like event to bootstrap the community. We have distributed $1 million um, dollars to 10 great projects, and we did that with the POAP vote. Um, we have invited all those projects to participate, and in fact, like the results basically, I think, reflect how, how strong those projects like, were mobilizing their community. So that was like in a, in a kind of like a popular vote with POAPs, and, and, and that resulted in the following, like a distribution of funds. But uh, in Epoch 1, that has started on 8th of August and will conclude on the 19th of October, we will already have the vote with the revenue from locking G GLM. So the rules will be totally different, and like the, the community of people will be a little bit different. And uh, we are already accumulating funds for the first epoch, like the last of our uh, 3,125 validators become active at the beginning of September. Um, and yes, and we will have the first allocation period uh, between 19th of October and the 2nd of November. And after, the, after that, we will have like the, the uh, epoch like uh, every 90 days. And this is like a 90 days basically to have enough time to accumulate ETH rewards um, and do all the like, housekeeping needed around that. Uh, like the, the list of the, of, the, of the projects for the first epoch is not closed yet. First, we will for sure have this 10 projects. But we will also uh, curate, and also like with the community input, we hope, we will add like a five to 10 more projects to this first epoch. So um, if you are interested in that, you will find all the details on Monday in our social media. We will be announcing that. Like the details, like how the procedure will look like uh, on, on Monday. Which brings me to the end of the description of Octant. Uh, but I actually wanted to share with you some more thoughts I have on the general ecosystem of um, public goods funding in Web3 and beyond. And, and actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy because like, you know, we are quite theoretical on things right now because we have launched, but this is like a first epoch, so we 
are actually like experimenting with that and funding ourselves how it works. But still, I listening to the previous presentations, I see that a lot of the speakers like share my sentiment on certain things. So I hope this will be not like a repeating the same mantra again, but like a reinforcing like what's important and what this is for for the for the success in our space. So coming back to the, like, the first slide, we need sustainability and we need like a decision mechanism uh, for all that thing to be to be successful. And I think we have like a very interesting experiment in octant on both. But the question is how we can um, how we can make that more universal and how we like a translate that as the concept, not necessarily as the octant success, but as a concept to the like, success of the wider ecosystem. So in general, I believe that uh, there are some, like, a, I have defined like a three basic rules for the success of like a Web3 funding. Like a, I call them Web3 public goods funding uh, precepts uh, for our bright future. And I think like the first one is that we need to mobilize capital, not funds. We need to create funding machines and not like a public goods funding project. And also we need cooperation and not competition. And I will try to like, um, describe all those points. So first, we need like a capital, not funds. And about, by that I need, like a, I, I understand like there's sustainability. So basically something that can regenerate itself, can create like a stable, source of revenue that you can tap into to, to create stable source of public goods funding. And of course, like a pile of gold is not sustainable. Uh, creating value out of thin air is kind of not sustainable. Uh, I'm not like, really sure about that because this space is like a great in creating value out of thin air. And actually everything we do so far is, is done that way. Um, uh, but like a, probably like a long term, we need to do better than that. And also, I, I firmly believe that donations are not sustainable. So, so if we will try to run the whole system on donations, this will not really work. And like a, actually, we have like a great examples of income to capture uh, happening right now. Of course, like a, there is like a category that like a Golem belongs to, and I call that like a category like a ICO dragons. So basically, like back from the old time, not necessarily from the ICO, but back all the old time, you have like a treasure chest, and you know you have a seed on that chest, and you don't really know what to do with that chest because you're a dragon. So like you know, like have you ever heard about like a dragon spendings? Uh, not really. So so like this ICO dragons, I think this is like a like a like a category like with a with a high potential. And I hope we are like the, um, we are the showcase, how that can be done. We will be a showcase, how, how that can be done. But you know, in fact, like any treasure chest, like uh, falls into that category. So I, I, I believe that we can build mechanism that would allow for each staking that at the same time, like the promotes public goods funding. So we don't have in Ethereum, we don't have taxation on the protocol level but does not prevent us from building on top of Ethereum each staking projects that would allow for self-taxation, that would like encourage self-taxation through making it fun, through gamifying that, through um, allow, making it simple. So, so, so I think there is like a huge potential to untap potential, there's two, Potential in a top potential. No, there is a huge opportunity in untapping potential of all this wealth that are sitting not used on Ethereum blockchain. And of course, if you happen not to be Ethereum layer one, then network or protocol fees are the great way to go. We could see that uh, today in the Optimist presentation. I think there are other other uh, examples as well. So I think in the end. Like any value that can generate like a low risk income and can be like a gamified or incentivized or like the um, mechanism designed into into public goods funding will do. 
Um, yeah, well, that was what I said already. So I, I went uh, uh, a little bit further than I, so you might start, but I think like a staking, voluntary taxation, uh, and gamifying, I basically like way to go with those all like wealth that we could try to use for um, funding public goods. And this is like what I call like a funding machine. So, so if you have like the source of income, of like a revenue that you can tap into, and then you build like a funding machine on top of it to incentivize like a certain behaviors, to have allocation algorithms that would involve your community or target community into like a decision making uh, mechanism. Um, the last point about like a cooperation and not competition, like this is, I think this is like a kind of non-obvious, uh, surprisingly, because like we, we tend to believe that the public goods are non-competitive and the question is, is public goods funding uh, non-competitive? Like, um, well, in a way, it is not competitive. But on the other hand, uh, I can see like a project, like a competing, you know, on one, like a, who does that better, who create like a more like a positive external external externalities for themselves in the process. Uh, I can see like a public goods funding like limited to the single part of the ecosystem. So this is all like like a kind of like a competitive behavior that I think we should be trying to avoid. And I don't see that as a problem at the moment because just because of how it is happening right now, I see public goods funding at the moment as like the highly fragmented on the like a technical level. So basically like everyone does their stuff and something happens there. But on the other hand, as for what is getting funded, I basically think that we are quite all right in most of the cases. So, so, so the, this is not like that. I don't like the optimist funds only like optimist stuff, like a Filecoin only funds like a Filecoin stuff and so on. No, this is not the case. We go broader, and this is great. Um, but I think like the we can we can gradually increase the level of cooperation. I believe the the, the like the like a joint efforts to at least like a keep like the record of what's happening and in evalu evaluating what is the impact is like a minimum. So like I, I think like the things like the, uh, I don't remember the name, like with this project registry by Gitcoin or hypercerts or other initiatives like that are probably like a good starting point that we could evolve like a further to, 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 to ensure this layer or, or like it works on the um, proof of uniqueness, whether this is like the Gitcoin passport or something else. Um, so I think this is like a minimum that we have these building blocks that we can use. But I, I think that we could even try to, to, to create interconnected funding system that would allow, I don't know, Octant users uh, donating to Gitcoin round, for example, or vice versa or doing like uh, any other like a uh, crazy stuff with that. That would be like a really end game that I would like to see at some point in the future. So if you want to learn more about Octant, not about all the science fiction stuff that I talk later, here is the barcode and thank you very much. <laughs>